Opening shot, professor standing in front of a whiteboard professor. Good morning, class. Today, we will delve into the fascinating topic of Dressler syndrome and explore its pathophysiology, diagnosis, treatment, and long-term outcomes. Dressler syndrome, also known as post-myocardial infarction syndrome or post-pericardiotomy syndrome, is an immune-mediated inflammatory response involving the pericardium. It typically occurs following myocardial infarction or cardiac surgery. So, let's begin our journey into understanding the complexities of Dressler syndrome. Following a heart attack, Dressler syndrome develops due to the release of antigens from damaged heart tissue. This triggers an immune response, involving both innate and adaptive immunity, resulting in an exaggerated inflammatory cascade. The exact triggers are not fully understood, but autoantigens and myocardial damps are suspected. Understanding the specific immunological factors and immune responses involved in Dressler syndrome is crucial for unraveling its pathogenesis. Autoantibodies, produced in response to the myocardial antigens, play a significant role. These autoantibodies, such as antimyosin and antipericardial antibodies, further activate the immune system and perpetuate the inflammatory response. Cytokines, including IL-1, IL-6, and TNF-alpha, also contribute to the immune response in Dressler syndrome. These cytokines mediate the recruitment and activation of immune cells, leading to further tissue damage and inflammation. Inflammatory mediators, such as prostaglandins and leukotrienes, further amplify the inflammatory cascade. Autoantibodies play a significant role in perpetuating the inflammatory response associated with Dressler syndrome. These antibodies target specific antigens present in the myocardium and pericardium, leading to sustained immune activation. Antimyosin antibodies, for example, have been detected in patients with Dressler syndrome and are believed to contribute to ongoing inflammation. The presence of autoantibodies also holds potential implications for diagnosis and treatment strategies. In conclusion, accurate diagnosis of Dressler syndrome involves evaluating clinical findings, performing laboratory tests, and utilizing imaging modalities. These criteria aid in identifying the presence and severity of pericardial inflammation, facilitating prompt intervention and management. Histopathological examination of tissue samples obtained during pericardiocentesis or pericardiectomy reveals characteristic features of Dressler syndrome. Inflammatory changes are observed within the pericardium, with infiltration of lymphocytes, macrophages, and neutrophils. The accumulation of fibrin and fibrinoid material may also be present. The surrounding tissues, including the epicardium and myocardium, may exhibit signs of inflammation and fibrosis. These histopathological findings help confirm the diagnosis and distinguish Dressler syndrome from other causes of pericarditis. In summary, echocardiography is commonly used for initial assessment, while cardiac MRI and CT scans offer additional information regarding anatomical and functional aspects of pericardial inflammation in Dressler syndrome, helping to guide diagnosis and monitor the condition effectively. Differentiating Dressler syndrome from other causes of pericarditis involves considering clinical features, laboratory findings, and imaging characteristics. Idiopathic pericarditis often presents with a viral prodrome, while Dressler syndrome is typically associated with previous myocardial infarction or cardiac surgery. Laboratory findings, such as elevated inflammatory markers and specific autoantibodies, may vary depending on the cause of pericarditis. Imaging features, such as pericardial thickening, calcifications, or pleural effusions, also aid in distinguishing Dressler syndrome from infectious and autoimmune pericarditis. Several factors influence the prognosis of patients with Dressler syndrome. The extent of pericardial inflammation, the presence of complications such as tamponade, and the underlying cardiac pathology all contribute to the long-term outcomes. Prompt diagnosis and appropriate treatment play a crucial role in minimizing complications and improving outcomes. Potential long-term complications of Dressler syndrome include constricted pericarditis, recurrent pericarditis, and the development of adhesive pericarditis. These complications may necessitate further interventions, including pericardiectomy or recurrent anti-inflammatory therapy. The use of anti-inflammatory medications, such as nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, and corticosteroids, is important in treating Dressler syndrome. NSAIDs reduce inflammation by blocking certain enzymes, while corticosteroids have stronger anti-inflammatory effects by suppressing various immune cells and cytokines. The choice of medication depends on the severity of symptoms and patient factors. NSAIDs are typically used first, while corticosteroids may be considered for more severe cases. Careful consideration of the benefits and risks is essential for optimal patient care. In refractory Dressler syndrome, surgical interventions can be considered if conservative management fails. Pericardial drainage and pericardiectomy may be performed to relieve tamponade or remove the inflamed pericardium, 
depending on the clinical presentation and underlying cardiac pathology. Careful patient selection and collaborative decision-making are essential for optimal outcomes. There exists a potential overlap in clinical presentation, diagnostic challenges, and management strategies between Dressler syndrome and recurrent pericarditis. Recurrent pericarditis is characterized by repeated episodes of pericardial inflammation, which can resemble Dressler syndrome concerning symptoms and laboratory findings. Careful evaluation is essential to differentiate between these entities. A thorough history, including time relationship to myocardial infarction or cardiac surgery, aids in distinguishing Dressler syndrome from recurrent idiopathic pericarditis. Recurrent pericarditis often requires long-term anti-inflammatory therapy, including colchicine and immunosuppressive agents. Identifying the etiology accurately guides appropriate management decisions and optimizes patient outcomes. Dressler syndrome, a complication of heart attack or heart surgery, can lead to additional issues like constricted pericarditis. Early diagnosis, anti-inflammatory treatment, and monitoring are crucial for preventing and managing these complications. Prompt action and regular follow-up are key. In conclusion, Dressler syndrome is a complex immune-mediated inflammatory response involving the pericardium. Accurate diagnosis and management are crucial for optimal care. Complications can arise, so close monitoring and follow-up are necessary.